All right, we're gonna bring another part of the series for the bearing Yoder C640 thermal resolution clip-on uh, to you today. Uh, what we're gonna cover today is the installation of the Yoder C clip-on unit using the telescopic adapter on the back of the Yoder C housing. So I'm gonna undo what I've got here. This is the final completed setup that I did for mock fitting and now I'll break it all down and I'll start from the beginning with you and show you the different various components of the lens array and telescopic adapter and how to apply it to a 30 millimeter front objective of a day scope. So here we are with the Yoder C and the components necessary to apply it on, onto a rifle scope equipped with a day optic. This is a uh, Miopta 1x6x30 millimeter day scope and so I've shown in previous series how to rail mount it in front of this optic uh, but in case you are using a bolt action or if you want to actually adapt it to the front bell housing that's what the objective today is so here is the telescopic adapter uh, provided for the 30 millimeter optic uh, this is actually two pieces as equipped bearing states a extender is necessary which is this part I'm unscrewing in order to get the optimal um, spacing between the screen of the Yoder C and your day optic system. So ask your dealer when you're shopping for this or if you get your uh, 30 millimeter telescopic adapter kit and it just comes here with fine threads and the throw lever and nothing more then you may inquire about the extender which is this item here. So I'll put those two back together. Now it is keyed for a wrench in order to apply a torque. I'll just go with uh, super hand tight, how about that? Okay, again throw lever is two position, that's wide open or on off. And then back, you see that gap close there and that will apply the necessary pressure on the front housing to make the system solid. This is the clip-on lens array connector. Again, it has a magnet at top dead center, which only goes in one way to the back of the Yoder C. All these other keys are different shapes to keep you from misaligning. And this tells the Yoder C, the magnet does when it engages, to go into clip-on mode uh, for the software interface and functionality. Um, the fine threads here are on the back and then it's got coarse threads in here where it'll actually mate up to the rear of the Yoder C. And then the final piece to discuss is the actual body housing of the Yoder C. Uh, right now it does not have any lens attachment to it. I took the rail mount off and so this is about as streamlined as you can get the unit. Um, the screen is very very tiny and so it's not really functional or usable in this aspect field work. So what I'll do now is I will adapt the rear housing to the Yoder C body. No Loctite on any of this. Um, you, you don't want to get Loctite involved in this situation it'll just complicate your life later so everything hand tight and then I'm gonna put these lock rings all the way forward again there's two of them okay so in concept um, you want that throw lever on top as such and you want it all the way, you see where you can actually install it at various depths there, but there is an internal shelf in this part, so when you push it all the way, you will get a hard stop there. Uh, the way this is designed to go is to have this throw lever top dead center, and when you do that, nothing moves. It essentially is now an extension of your day optics structure, okay, and it's meant to support the weight of the clip-on thermal unit using the interface of your day optic to your rifle. So 
whatever rail mount you use, be sure it's uh, robust enough to handle the additional weight and flex that a clip-on brings to the front of your day optic. Um, the next thing you want to do is you'll want to couple these two items together and you want to end up with the Yoder C with its controls top dead center as well. Uh, you don't want to try and install it here. You'll have uh, interference, so you want to do this off the rifle. So I'll unlock this, bring it off. To do this, I start with my double lock rings all the way forward. And this also has a shelf internally, so I want to screw that on all the way. Use as many threads as possible for stability and strength. Okay, right there. Now, you'll see that I'm about uh, two o'clock position in terms of top dead center. We want it to ultimately be like this and where it came to a hard stop is at the two o'clock or three o'clock position there. So I actually will need to back this off as such and now I can begin to utilize my lock rings and bring them closer one at a time. The first lock ring is not keyed in any way, so leaving this front one as forward as possible. Everything finger tight right now. Okay, right about there is uh, pretty close. Now here's the trick. You just want to play with the mating of that first lock ring. Maybe hold it steady while you turn the actual telescopic adapter because you have a little bit of area there to push on and that's lining up pretty close there okay now that I have those two tight I bring that second lock ring which is keyed for wrench and the double lock ring is gonna make sure nothing moves in this equation alright so there you have it now the last aspect is that you want to make sure the crosshairs of your day optic are aligned correctly to the screen. So dependent on how your fitting here went, it still may be necessary to back these off and turn the unit ever so and lock them in so that as you complete the process of the installation, see right here I have a little bit of turn I can make and when you lock that in you want your crosshairs to be to basically make equal quadrants of the screen real estate so that you're not canted or askew so at this point it's going to be necessary for me to get behind the rifle to actually look at that and uh, I'll try to illustrate it using the video camera to show you what that looks like all right here we are behind the day optic screen looking on the back of the Yoder C screen and you'll see that my crosshairs are just ever so canted to the right um, so what I'll do is I'll reach forward to that throw lever on the telescopic adapter I will loosen it now watch what happens when you loosen it the screen is going to drop dramatically don't worry about that and don't try to adjust the Yoder C to offset that drop. That's something that only can be taken out. The slack can only be taken out by the throw adapter. When it applies the necessary pressures, it'll bring that screen back up. So I'm going to move the entire Yoder C. Turning it left makes the, the cant worse, and turning it right corrects it. So. We want the screen to be as square to the crosshairs as possible. Uh, right there I'm still canted a little bit to the right. I'm going to loosen again. Okay, that is pretty close. And you know, obviously where this is important is as you zero uh, and you make your adjustments to 
windage and elevation you want them to track as true as possible it's very very difficult without specialized equipment to get totally square so you get close enough and as I'm looking at the um, elevation bar of my reticle it seems to intersect uh, the screen at the midpoint both top and bottom as well as uh, right and left on the sides there so I'm happy with this alignment uh, I've locked the throw ring of the telescopic adapter in and then we will come off scope and I'll show you sort of what the alignment is looking like of the uh, components. Alright, so with the exception of the camcorder, I've left it in place to show you how I brought that video from behind the scope to you. Um, but everything forward of the camcorder is for discussion right now. So in final fitting and installation of the Yoder C, what I'm looking at is the top dead center position of the day optic. It has a couple of marks uh, on the actual day optic. There's one that kind of tells you where relative top dead center is. That should carry forward through your the center line of your rings. I actually have a set of rings on here that has uh, spacing there um, to which further assists me, but yours might not have that, your scope rings. Uh, but as you get to this center line here, uh, you want that to line up top dead center as best as possible and right now it looks like I am askew a little bit to the left. So this is a little bit off top dead center to the left and then as I go further down the system um, because I was able to put the crosshairs aligned with the screen you'll see that the Yoder C body is straight but again, this, this is a little bit left. So, it's functional, it's usable in this current uh, setup. Uh, in order to get it perfect, what you would do is you would loosen the lock ring, the double lock rings, and you would actually uh, get this straight in line with top dead center, and then you would again uh, tighten them down so that the little bit of cant that you created there you would bring that in line. So if you can get a center line all the way through, then you have a perfect installation. I'm near perfect in this aspect and for the purposes of this video, in terms of illustrating to you what the components and pieces are necessary to do the install, uh, I'm satisfied at this point in having related that.